G'day everyone, my friend Jake and I were challenged by ChatGPT to each make an entire game in a week, and this is what happened. The plan is Mr. ChatGPT will give us a prompt, and we can build whatever we want centered around that topic. And Mr. ChatGPT gave us the theme, Evolution. But next, we asked Mr. ChatGPT to give us some requirements for our challenge. And there were some doozies. I thought we were going to get simple things like have at least two playable characters or make the main color red. But no. Number one, limited resources. Number two, adaptive challenges. And number three, branching evolution paths. On their own, each of these could be their own defining features of a game. And we have to somehow include all three. And just like that, the scope has skyrocketed through the roof. I spent the day before the challenge mostly brainstorming. Those three restraints want to funnel you into a certain type of survival pokemon S game, and I wanted to stay away from that. I also wanted to keep the idea simple, something I could gun out in 3-5 to five days and leave me the weekend to polish and balance, a step I normally neglect in these challenges. I was having a dry spell on ideas, so I started browsing the asset store for inspiration. I'm no artist, and with a theme like evolution, I knew art was going to play a big part in that. I stumbled across an asset pack of various slimes and I thought, I can use that. I've personally been enjoying some of those push or luck type games and when I merged those two trains of thought together, the game became clear. So my idea is to make a game where you play as a ragtag group of slimes looking to overthrow the evil king slime, and the combat would be resolved with dice. Each face of the dice would correspond to an action the player can take, and a player can choose to keep the rolled action, or to re-roll and try and get something better, or end up with something worse and players will evolve their slimes by evolving the various actions of their dice with a resource that they get from killing enemies. But to make it scarce, healing, reviving, and increasing max health will all consume this same resource. The idea seems simple enough and I'm confident I can gun out these core systems because they're similar to ones I've made for other projects. The first two days were a bit of a blur. I just put my head down and got to work, and by the end I had pretty much carved out the general game. Day 1, I got the dice rolling and locking, some rough units, unit displays, and the basic game states and input handlers. Day 2, I added actions to the dice, heroes could select targets with their actions, enemies would select random enemies for their actions, and health bars would now display a unit's remaining health. By the end of the day, I'd finished off the entire general flow of the game, including a grey box main menu, enemy waves, unit management, and a game start and game over screen. Day 3 was all about evolution. I greyboxed how I wanted the UI to be laid out for the evolve screen, and I started working on filling it in. I added the dice panel which displays a slimed current die actions, selecting one of them displays the possible upgrades for that action, and you can permanently evolve the action into a new and stronger one. Day 4 focus on adding the money. Here comes the money. money, 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 money. <laughs> I set up the basic consumption and added costs to the evolutions, and then started working on the action describer. With so many possible abilities and effects in the game, I wanted an easy way for players to identify what each action does. I imported a package by a yellow paper which allowed me to serialize references to interfaces so I could customize what UI triggered an action to be displayed. And this worked perfectly. Doesn't do much now, but will be very useful later on. After some much needed rest, I started day 5 by finishing off the health update. I had to rework how health worked, instead of being a single stat for a unit, I had to convert it to its own class with its own methods and events. This made it much easier to hook in the UI to do exactly what I wanted, as I decided to convert it from a single health bar into individual heart icons. I was scared I was going to have to cut the healing and max health components out, but thanks to my refactor it made it very easy to implement. So I added three new features, one that will heal a slime for 3 health, one that increases a slime's max health, and one that will revive a dead slime with two thirds of its max health. The rest of the day was finally focused on art, now that the bulk of the game is done. I added new fonts, a new background, updated the unit displays, added new health icons, added character images, updated dice sprites, and just changed the layout of all the combat UI. One last thing I did was build on my new health system and add special health points that have unique behaviours. For now I've just added the armour health point which consumes all remaining damage. So if an enemy would take 4 damage, they only take 1 instead. I was really happy with where I was at the start of day 6 and had the entire weekend ahead of me. This was the perfect time to add some depth and complexity to the combat system. First up was adding the heal action. Being able to heal a fellow slime during battle is a great way to keep them alive and can save some valuable DNA. I also added unit highlights to show who was taking an action. But healing is kind of useless when you have full HP, so I came up with an idea to add shields. 
Shields are temporary buffs which reduce incoming damage, but only last for a single round. I also added three action effects which modify how an ability works. Assassinate which deals double damage to opponents with less than half health, Giant Killer forces the attack to target the enemy with the most HP, and Charge which deals double damage to targets with full HP. Now this is where the action describer from earlier is useful because now a player can hover over any action and see exactly how all the effects work. The other main thing was the wave spawner and difficulty controls. I made predefined wave objects which would spawn a set list of enemies. I also added some empty difficulty options which change how much DNA is awarded to the player for beating a level. Here we go. Day 7, last day. I added the last bit of new content which includes 3 new actions, attack and heal, attack and shield, and for the enemies, a summon action. I also added a summon health point which summons a slime when an enemy loses a certain amount of health. I finally added some extra effects including cleave which targets adjacent enemies, swift which allows an action to be used twice, very swift which allows an action to be used three times, and Cursed, which means the attacker takes the same amount of damage that they deal. Next, I powered through for a few hours and set up all of the heroes, enemies, and actions that I needed, including a very lengthy Photoshop trip where I made all of the dice faces. I also decided to add in the simple slime animation that came with the asset pack. It's super simple, but definitely helps show who's taking an action. Then, I put a build together, and then I tested. And tested. And tested. My original design was definitely way too hard and there were a bunch of simple things that I missed that you just don't think of until you sit down and play the game. These include a way to quit the game and an option to cancel a slime's action by clicking on the background. The main thing was just reducing the health of enemies and playing around with where some of the special health points were. The other main addition was adding a fourth character, which helped increase the options a player could take, but I slightly reduced everyone's health to make up for it. But thankfully, the economy seemed to be pretty good, I could never afford everything I wanted, but I never felt that I was underpowered. Last thing to do was the adaptations. I summed all the different dice effects for all of the slimes and used that to determine which modifications to apply to the enemies. So if a player has a lot of high damage, armored health will be added. If a player has a lot of special attacks, extra health will be added. And if a player has a lot of heal and shield actions, then summon health points will be added and the number of modifications made scales with the difficulty. I did one final playthrough and was super happy with how it all went, so I uploaded the build to Itch and submitted the game. Both Jake and I wanted to add one or two more small quality of life updates, so we gave ourselves a bonus two hours to tweak our games. I added a display to show what action the slime has by clicking on them, and also gave all the heroes permanent blanks, since I found it much more enjoyable when there was always a risk that you could do nothing. I also made the background change when the player got to certain waves, some final balancing changes to finish off the challenge, and that was finally done. I called it coup de slime after the term coup de gras, which means finishing blow, but since you're overthrowing King Uzma, you're also cooing the slime. I was proud of that. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. Game day. Time for a face off. The two of us hopped into a call to start playing both our games, and Coup de Slime was up first. I took Jake through the basics of the game, and he was loving it. I like this. This is cool. These are... Uh... You did You did sort of what I wanted to do with, like, the UI <laughs> elements, but, like, a thousand times better. <laughs> You'll see mine. It's like, it's like shitty 2D drawings. It's so funny. No. <laughs> yeah. So what's the what's the meta? Have you found one? Like do you do you like upgrade like all characters? Do you upgrade some? I think what's really cool is that I mean I haven't found a particularly I don't want to say a bad one yet, but you can sort of play it how you want. And if you go back to Evolve, I'll show you one last thing because I yeah. almost missed it. If you click on any of the characters, it doesn't matter. Uh, the two white crosses can be upgraded as well. Oh, okay. So the red yes. cross is a permanent blank, but you, the white crosses can be upgraded yeah. to action as well. Uh, then it was time for his first battle, and I watched on like a proud parent. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll start with an easy battle here. Dude, I'm excited yeah. for this. This is cool. This is really <laughs> sick. You can probably go normal. You can, you can yeah. go normal. Normal's fine. Yeah. So the enemies roll first. The enemies roll first. But they attack last. That's correct. Yeah, got you. Oh, so he um, didn't do anything here. He's got, he's got blank. This is round one. Well. So half of his things are. So he's a 50% chance of blanking every oh, missing everything. Dude, that's sick. Time. Okay, okay. Wow, 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 wow. We ran into one or two small minor issues that I didn't have time to fix. All right. Okay, a shield's good. A, sh a shield's good. 
Okay, so he, have a he, look. Could, he could shield himself, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, shielded, he shielded, wrong shielded one. the wrong guy. <laughs> but in no time, Jake had already started to master the game. This is cool. Whoa. Alright, uh, okay. So if you... Well, I'm, 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 I think I see this. If I, if I do okay. this and this... Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that's so it. You, you see it, you see it, and now, boom, boom gone. Wow. Absolutely I nailed it. Yeah, yeah, that feels cool. There we go. Really cool. <laughs> Jake absolutely crushed it. And what's great is he managed to beat the entire game. I gave him a few pointers here and there, but he was able to do it on his own. What I loved even more was that he evolved the slimes in a way I hadn't tested yet, but still came out victorious, even on difficult mode. This means that I balanced the game pretty well, which is something I was working particularly hard on, so I was happy with how that worked out. Then we swapped, and it was my turn to play Elemental Survivors. So it's, think like Pokemon style, like elements work the same way that it does in Pokemon. <laughs> Franny Lowkey the goat, no cat. <laughs> Good base stats, but definitely for the players who want a little challenge. All right. <laughs> yeah, the the descriptions are all uh, interesting, I guess. Rufus is one of the characters of all time. High speed, but low damage. Great for beginners. All right, it's probably me. Slim, actually thick as hell. <laughs> Ironically named, he has low speed, but high damage and defense for the players who hate their life. And we got Woody. Woody is your classic all-rounder. Great for beginners, and he was my testing dummy. He will always hold a special place in my little heart. All right, love it. Let's go for insane. Are there any final warnings before I, before I jump in? Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't go back. <laughs> well, after that ominous warning, I was keen to hop in and start playing. All right, we'll see how we go. I think because we started in a forest for my game, I think it's only fair that we start in a swamp for yours. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Let's... Oh my gosh, I have to do some tricks. Guys. Is there a range on the attacks? Uh, you kind of just see it. What am I? I'm good against lightning here, yeah, and I'm weak against fire, so I probably want to get you. And after a bit of grinding, I got my first power up. Yeah. Oh, choose an upgrade. Okay. These are my cool hand drawn like UI designs. Oh, okay. I f with that. Well, let's do piercing damage. <laughs> That's a good one that like I usually start with as well. I was starting to get in the rhythm of things when I got a big upgrade. We'll see here in a second. This is kind of an interesting one I added. Oh. Your characters are ready. Okay. So now you get a second element, and now you can like stack like. So if you were originally weak to fire, uh, and you take fire. Now like it balances itself out. Now you're doing like normal damage to them, but it might like make you weaker to other elements as well. I continued carving away at these slimes for ages until my luck finally ran out. Oh, I might be dead here. Oh my god, no! Womp womp, game over. Jake's game was a lot of fun, and I now have a record that all of you can try and beat yourself. But then we had to decide a winner, and Jake very graciously decided to give me the W. I don't have any proof of him admitting this, but I'm not lying, I swear. Anyway, I'm gonna take it. I am the official winner of the GDS3 Game Jam. I do feel slightly bad, Jake was sick for part of it and traveled during it, so I must admit I did have a bit of an advantage here, but I will still gladly accept the crown. Everything just went right for me with this game. Majority of the code I wrote just seemed to work on the first go. Part of this was definitely luck, but another part was a strategic choice on my end to make a game that I was kind of familiar with. And all of my art, despite being from a bunch of different sources, just gelled together really well. This is honestly one of the best games I've ever made, especially during a single week no less, so I think this one was just meant to go my way. But I'm sure this won't be the last time Jake and I face off in one of these competitions, so I know I can't get complacent, because he's one talented developer and he's going to be bringing his A game next time. Thanks so much for watching everyone, if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like, I had an absolute blast making this video, I'll leave a link in the description to both games so you can check them out for yourselves, and be sure to leave a comment on who you thought was victorious in this face off. And if you haven't checked out Jake's video yet, what are you doing? Go watch it now, and while you're at it you should subscribe, he does some really cool shit. That's everything for this video, so I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers everyone. Thank you very much. I will, as I said, I'll, I'll gladly accept this victory because, as I said, I know what you're capable of. So next time, <laughs> as I said, as you're going away to train now in the Tibetan mountains, <laughs> kind of come back with the beard and just like, all right, I'm ready and throw down the gauntlet.